Tuesday, August 15, Unity Building, Grace-Filled Speech Which of Paul's words of counsel with regard to the use of speech among believers is the most important to you just now? Why? Well, let's read Ephesians 4, verses 25 to 29. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbour, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labour, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Paul repeatedly uses an interesting structure in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 25 to 32, which is illustrated in Ephesians 4.25. A negative command, putting away lying. A positive command next, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbour. And then a rationale, for we are members of one another which seems to mean because we are members of one body and so related to one another as parts of that one body. Paul's exhortation to speak truth is not an invitation to confront other church members with a tactless recitation of facts. Paul alludes to Zechariah 8.16, which exhorts speaking the truth as a way of fostering peace. Let's read that text, Zechariah 8.16. These are the things you shall do. Speak each man the truth to his neighbour. Give judgment in your gates for truth, justice and peace. Since in Ephesians 4.31 Paul banishes anger and angry speech, his words in Ephesians 4.26 provide no permission to exercise anger within the congregation. Rather, Paul concedes the possibility of anger while limiting its expression with the sense, should you become angry, do not allow it to bear fruit in full-blown sin. Paul appears to interrupt his theme of speech with a negative command about thieves. Let the thief no longer steal, in Ephesians 4.28. Positively, the thief is to labour doing honest work with his own hands in the same verse. We also see something like this in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 12, and we labour working with our hands, being reviled we bless, being persecuted we endure. And in 1 Thessalonians 4, 11, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. And this is based on the rationale so that he may have something to share with anyone in need in Ephesians 4.28. Perhaps Paul includes this word about thieves here because of the connection between theft and deceptive speech as illustrated by the story of Ananias and Sapphira in Acts 5, 1-11. Paul's faith in Christ's transforming power is so strong that he envisions thieves becoming benefactors. Paul then commands... Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, in verse 29, which describes a destructive word making its seemingly unstoppable way toward the lips to do its damaging work. Positively, Paul imagines any negative expression not being just stopped, but replaced by a statement that exhibits three criteria. It, one, is looking for building up, two, fits the occasion, and three, gives grace to those who hear, as we would find in Ephesians 4.29. If only all our words could be like that.